Let's talk about forecasting. We all try to predict the future, right? But what if I told you the goal isn't to be right? In fact, what if the real goal is to get really, really good at being wrong? That's what we're gonna dig into today. Okay, let's just start with this idea right here because it pretty much flips everything we've been taught about forecasting completely on its head. I mean, think about it. We're always told, get it right, be accurate. But what if the real job is to understand that we're gonna be wrong and then use that to make smarter choices? It's a huge shift. You know that feeling, right? That immense pressure to nail the forecast to get the future exactly right. It creates so much anxiety. And you know why? Because deep down, we all know it's basically impossible. And that right there, that's the prediction trap. So where does all that anxiety come from? It's simple, really. The world is just built on uncertainty. It's messy. And when we try to force one single clean answer onto this super complex system, well, we're just setting ourselves up to fail. And this isn't just for big finance firms, you know? This applies to anyone managing a project or, heck, even just trying to plan out your own life. Okay, so how do we get out of this trap? Well, it all starts by changing how we even think about what a forecast is. It's not some magic crystal ball showing us the one true future. No, it's about building something way more flexible and honestly way more useful. Here's the new definition. A forecast isn't a fact. It's more like a story, a story with a bunch of different possible endings. And our job is to figure out which endings are more or less likely, you know, based on everything we can see today. And this is where things get tricky, right? You've got this classic tug of war. Management, they usually want one number. Just tell me what it's gonna be. Simple, clean, easy. But the truth, the analytical truth, is that the future is a whole spectrum of possibilities. The real skill is figuring out how to manage both of those realities at the same time. So let's really dig in here. Why is hanging your hat on one single number so risky? I mean, it's not just that you'll probably be wrong. It can actually be dangerous. Let's look at a real world case to see just how shaky that one little number can be. All right, imagine you're working for a finance company. You put out a single forecast. What can go wrong? Well, let's see. Interest rates could spike. A new tariff could drop out of nowhere. Supply chains get all tangled up. Consumers might just change their minds. All these things are constantly shifting, making that one perfect number you came up with basically obsolete the second you set it. And that brings us to the real key takeaway here. Our job as analysts, as planners, as leaders, it isn't to be a fortune teller. That's impossible. The real job, the one that actually adds value, is to quantify the uncertainty. It's to map out the fog, not pretend it isn't there. Okay, so this all sounds great in theory, right? But how do we actually do it? Let's get practical. Here's a toolkit for learning the art of being wrong. So we start to see errors differently. They're not failures, they're data. So what does this mean in practice? Well, first, forecast reviews stop being about blame and start being about discovery. You ask, what did we learn? Second, we stop trusting overly complex black box models. We build simpler things and we know their limits. And third, and maybe this is the most important, we get humble. We admit when our assumptions were off and we do it fast so we can fix them and get better. Man, I love this quote. It just nails that tension we talked about. It's about walking that line. Give them the simple number they need for the reports, but make sure your thinking and your strategy are based on the real messy range of what could happen. So what are the action items here? Four big things. One, stop talking about the forecast. Start running multiple scenarios to create a distribution of forecasts. Two, speak in probabilities. Use ranges. Say things like, we expect X, give or take Y percent. Three, visualize it. Use charts that actually show the range of uncertainty. Don't hide it. And four, and this is crucial, when you miss the mark, don't panic. Treat that variance as a free lesson on how to make your model better next time. Okay, we're heading into the home stretch, and everything we've talked about so far builds up to this one final, really powerful idea. This is the mindset shift that changes everything. First thing we need to get straight in our heads. We are not in the prediction business, period. It's a game you just can't win. So if we're not in the prediction business, what business are we in? We're in the decision preparation business. See the difference? The goal isn't to guess right. The goal is to help everyone get ready for whatever comes, to be prepared for a bunch of different futures so we aren't caught flat-footed. And you know, this quote really gets at something deep. 
The real value of forecasting isn't even the final number. It's the process. It's the act of doing it that forces you to really, truly understand the present. It makes you question everything you think you know. Okay, just let this one sink in for a second, because it is everything. Wow. Think about that. We don't do this hoping we're right. We do this knowing we'll be wrong. Because finding out how we're wrong is exactly how we learn and get better. It's the whole point. So when you really embrace this, everything changes. Every time you miss the mark, it's not a failure. It's a lesson. Every planning cycle becomes a chance to get just a little bit smarter, a little more ready for what's next, a little less wrong. So I'll just leave you with this to chew on. Take a look at how you plan, whether it's for your business or just your own life. Are you betting everything on one single predicted future? Or are you building the resilience to thrive in the many futures that could actually happen?